Hello, Robin Moore here, and this week it's my 25th anniversary as a volunteer, a wish granter, and as a national patron of Make-A-Wish. 25 years ago, I received a cold call inviting me to participate in a Make-A-Wish event because I was the voice of the TV Blinky Bill. Well, that cold call transformed my life. This week, I've been reminded about all of the wonderful things our precious children have taught me. I've learned about the healing power of the word. Blinky's been ringing children over all these years. He first rang Alicia, who was waiting for a heart-lung transplant. After the call, her doctor said her lung function had increased dramatically. Blinky rang three-year-old Sophie for five years after her liver transplant. I've learned about the value of fun, play and laughter when you're facing adversity. Bosco, number one Manly fan, shared that after he came out of his coma, he wished to go bowling with his hero Brett Stewart and have a plate of prawns. Little Hamish, who only has half a heart, was pulled in the sled by huskies. I've learned about living with urgency before the emergency. This helps us make the impossible possible. We made it snow in Cairns for Fiona. Five-year-old Scarlet, with a pacemaker in her heart, saw a unicorn fly across the sky. It had a green mane and a green tail, and when she licked its horn, it tasted like rainbow. At Make-A-Wish, the secret to the power of the wish is the wish journey. We're all highly trained to take children into their innermost thoughts and desires, and we capture those. Sam became a plane driver, Catherine explored the sea, Brianna created the enchanted fairy tale ball for Make-A-Wish, Aaron met his Arsenal soccer stars, and Dom, well, he saved Sydney as Iron Boy. Then there's the wish coin. Each child is given a coin, which is our promise that we will deliver on their wish. Ethan had already named his future puppy Layla, which meant guardian angel, before we even met him. We had to keep this promise. And here's the magic moment. We enrich the human experience with hope, strength and joy. Then there's the wish design, where each child literally paints the future so that we can help them walk into their drawings. Isabel's dress design became a reality when she wished to be small enough to have a fairy party in Fairyland. She even said she wanted to meet Boss Queen Fairy, who called her for two months before her party. This really helped Isabel through her treatment. The anticipation phase is the most fascinating part of the journey, where we draw out the anticipation and the longing and the looking forward to. This is where the magic starts to build. As it did for Dwayne, when he wished to go to the moon. NASA even sent him his own spacesuit while he prepared. Then there's the wish realisation, where their wish really does come true. And it was time for Dwayne to blast off. He met the moon inhabitants and left his flag. Victorious with his companion astronaut, Dwayne is the 13th man on the moon. And finally, there's the wish impact on our children. Surgeon, a teenage refugee, wished to meet the Australian Prime Minister to thank him for his medical care and for bringing his family to Australia. The then Prime Minister was Tony Abbott who fulfilled Surgeon's wish, and everyone was deeply, deeply moved. I asked Surgeon afterwards how he felt, and he said, I feel like I'm flying. For way back then, Surgeon only had a few weeks to live. This was Surgeon recently. I was just presented with this beautiful star from Make-A-Wish, and every time I move, it makes rainbows all around the room. Rainbows often feature in our wishes because they're a sign of hope after uncertainty, just as they were on Spencer's wish. Every day in Australia, six families are told that their child has a life-threatening medical condition. I hope you've been inspired by some of these beautiful stories to actually become part of our wish force so that you too can help us make wishes come true.